Well, the rough stuff around the edges in the south is what I like to photograph. You never find treasure on a mowed lawn. You know, it's the weedy areas at the edge where you start finding interesting things. Hi, welcome back. Mark Steinmetz comes from my era. In fact, he was born in the same year as me. His early influences are similar to mine, Western, Frank, Winogrand, but that's where the career parallels end. My country slid into turmoil and I responded to what was happening around me, while Steinmetz directed his focus onto ordinary lives lived in ordinary places. I think the ordinary is extraordinary. Um... You know, um, photographing something highly dramatic or highly wonderful that everybody can agree upon is not super interesting um, to me. I think, you know, you want to photograph something that you, you alone love, that you alone are interested in. You want to see beauty in just what is. I've often wondered what it would have been like to start photographing in a place that wasn't surrounded by chaos. And some days I envy the space that that consistency offers. He's interested in how chance impacts photographic moments. He mainly works with black and white film because he views the whole analog process as a means of focusing his attention so that he can achieve the results that he's after. He says he prefers the way in which film describes light, silver rather than inkjet. So he has pretty much worked in the same way as when he started in the mid-80s. The same cameras, film, usually tri and developing chemicals. There's something very liberating about knowing what it is that you want to photograph, how you want to photograph it, and having the technical stuff all wrapped up. It means that he's free to look in an unhurried manner and allow his subconscious to recognize patterns of meaning. These recognitions present themselves quicker than one can think them through and make decisions about how to photograph them. So if one doesn't have too much clutter and mind chatter going on, there's more space available to allow these insights to come to the fore. Photography can help us have, as Robert Adams says, um, you know, m more affection for, for life. And if you go too far into what's considered the extraordinary, um, it all gets kind of boring quickly. You know, a lot of pictures I take, um, I take because it's just so in the moment. I, you know, the light is that way, the context behind is that way. What I like about his work is that he isn't hyping his pictures. There's no pumped up contrasts or overt statements. He's just showing us what he's seen. He talks about his meditation practice and mindfulness, and this way of being is reflected in his eloquent pictures. They're straightforward, but layered with understanding, perception, and awareness. He says, be like Luke in Star Wars. Use the Force. You want to embody it. Photography is not just about making the picture. This attitude of total immersion in the act of photographing has led him to generate strong views about being economical with his photography. There's a difference between having complex compositions that have a subtle clarity and busy frames with no harmony. Uh, it's your receptivity. You have, you have to cultivate your ability to receive and your ability to uh, not be so fixed with your ideas. And that's what sort of photography is. You know, you're plucking these images and you, you need to be detached to recognize that, uh, so that you're not caught up with what's really happening. Because the, the photograph in isolation is its own, it's its own thing. 
He sees Eugene Ache and Gary Winogrand as examples of photographers' work who've achieved this economy. Steinmetz believes that work should be open-ended, but you need to nail the ambiguity just right. When he was 22 years old, he drove Gary Winogrand about as he was photographing. Steinmetz said that he learned everything from Winogrand's pictures and his way of being. They didn't talk much about photography, but I would think that there were very valuable conscious and unconscious insights that he picked up during this time. Steinmetz talks about one bit of advice that he latched onto. He just said, uh, the world is full of seductions. To me that meant, you know, like watch out, and don't, don't get sucked down them. The important thing is doing great work. You know, your photographer is responsible for two things. Once you, you put your body where you want it to be, uh, what's in the frame and when you snap the shutter. That's what, you, that's what the photographer does. The camera does the rest. Well, you know, you get what the camera saw. He sees photography as a system of sharing. He takes pictures to share them. He wants his communication to be natural and real and to spark a recognition in his viewer. In order to achieve this, he prefers to step away from thinking too much and he tries to engage all of his senses. I think this comes across in the look of his photographs. It's difficult to nail down exactly why they work. He isn't using any compositional gymnastics or shouting about anything in particular. When his pictures work, they do so on a quiet level. Often I find that I connect with one of his photographs through a small gesture or an expression that's familiar to me on an emotional level. Steinmetz chooses the ordinary every time over the extraordinary. I want the vision to be normal and that's different from Dahl because I wanted to have that, you know, always that sense of suddenness and surprise. It's interesting if you can you know, photograph something very ordinary, yet it strikes. Um, you know, what you, you want to be brave, you want to be, you want to be natural and you want to be normal and you want to be yourself, you know, uh, so you have to um, separate yourself from what everybody else is doing at some point where I try to capture this sense of discovery, of surprise. Place is interesting to me. I, I like context. I want to describe things, you know. Um, and I want there to be some flavor to it all. The, I always say, you know, you don't make big waves. You just approach and you don't, it's not a big deal. It's not, you know, you're not putting a lot of energy out there. He works in series and one can see that there are links between the photographs within each project as well as across his bodies of work. He achieves a consistency which reflects his ongoing interest and curiosity about people. He's not trying to suggest that he's an all-knowing observer. He's just showing us the subtle similarities that bind us as humans. His life's work could probably be summed up as a collection of photographs of people, places, and maybe a few animals. If one looks deeper, one can see a lot more. The portraits allow us to get a glimpse into the inner lives of his subjects. And he fills in a few more details of his story by providing some location context. The whole experience of looking at his work is low-key, but it's similar to reading a poem. One comes away feeling a little more tethered to the world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The airport is just a good venue for human drama. You know, there's all kinds of theater that you see there. The idea of being on a journey is interesting to me and, and maybe the more introspective moments of contemplating this, this journey. Mm -hmm.